Welcome to Sculpey 101. This is class number 9, um, 9 of 10, which makes it the penultimate class. Pretty exciting to be on the penultimate class, wouldn't you say? Uh, if you want to check out the earlier ones, go to the playlist here. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to jump right in uh, doing hair and fur. So I'm going to start with hair. Obviously, this guy's got this incredibly messy um, head scarf thing over the top of his head, but he's got plenty of back of the head and, you know, sides and stuff to put hair on. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques. Uh, the most important thing to keep in mind when you're doing hair is not to just draw on the head. That hair has volume, it takes up space. So we want to reflect that with um, either by sculpting, you know, shapes of, of the hair volumes on the head or you can kind of draw on volumes off of the head. And by draw, I don't really mean draw. Um, and then place them on that way. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with both, see what I like for this guy. Okay, so two basic ways I'm going to put my clumps of hair onto a head. One is I'm going to make this little tapered bit. I'm going to blend it in on the top fatter part. And then I'm going to take my tool and, depending on the type of hair, um, whether it's straight or wavy or whatever, I'm just going to do wavy for this guy. I uh, kind of move my tool. You see I'm doing kind of an S-curve with it. And I'm as I'm uh, pulling the tool through the clay, it's pulling uh, the, the mass of it down and into the ball. And it looks like I need to, if, if your clay is breaking apart like these little bits here, that is because you have not uh, prepared it well enough by, by rolling it around in your hand to warm it up enough. Right now it is below freezing in my garage, I mean art studio, where I'm doing this, and so uh, it's kind of an uphill battle to keep this stuff warm. But you see I'm trying to shape this into peaks and valleys as I'm doing it. I'm not just drawing, you know, lines that gouge straight into the clay. I'm trying to keep the volume built up in there as well. Okay, so that's good for one clump. Now I'm going to go ahead and massage this uh, second piece for a little bit longer so that it won't break into pieces as I'm drying it out. And I'm going to overlap it a little bit near the top. It is still breaking up. I think uh, this particular batch of clay I got is just a little bit dry. So that's a basic way to get wavy, undulating hair volume. Uh, let me show you another quick way to get um, really fine hair texture in there. Start by with the same basic shape and volume but then instead of using this tool to go in by hand you can use a very coarse uh, paintbrush and dip it in the alcohol not too much but enough where it's not going to just uh, when you drag it across the clay it's not going to pull little balls up with it And then with semi-firm pressure, just pull it over the clay. And you can go over it multiple times and you'll get multiple little hair strand textures in there. Uh, the downside to this is that unless you have a very fine brush, you're going to get a really homogenous uh, uh, line direction, I guess is the way I would say that. But after you do that, you can easily go in with the 
the other tool and maybe and mark out some uh, bigger shapes. Yeah, I've not found a way to do this without getting very tiny little um, balls of clay that pop up and kind of sit on there, which you can go in and pick off. But at that point, uh, you might be spending more time cleaning up than you uh, save by using the paintbrush. So, I would feel free to experiment with that, experiment with various tools. You know, I'm using this hobby knife right now to go in and accentuate some of the paintbrush lines. But yeah, so there's there's two basic um, quick ways to do voluminous hair, and uh, yeah, like I said, experiment with it. Now let's get back to the real sculpture. So I kind of blended the head into the neck and the body here, but uh, it's when you're doing hair, it's awfully nice to have the head detached. So I'm just going to slice it off and then put it back on when I'm done. Typically, it's easiest if you start at the bottom and then you uh, successively layer the pieces on top of those. And the shorter the hair is, the smaller the uh, volume that it's going to raise up off the scalp, of course. All right, so that's the basics of hair. Let's move on to fur. I made a little uh, pelt. I'm gonna strap over this guy's back, like so. So let's fur it up. So basically what I do is I make a bunch of little um, triangular-ish bits. Try to keep them pretty irregular because you don't want all your fur clumps to be identical. The kind of fur I'm going to be simulating is kind of this bear fur where it's got very pronounced triangles. Kind of does it on the sheep too. You can kind of see it on the dog hair there. Now I've got these smaller bits for the edges where it goes towards the paws and basically I lay in a, the first row try to make it a little bit irregular And 
then I blend in the back edge. So I'm making these little kind of Christmas tree shapes. This is also how you would do scales, like uh, fish scales or dragon scales, that sort of thing. But in this case, I'm doing, uh, you know, scribing in these fur lines. For a super short fur, you can just scribe right on the surface. Just make sure that your lines are irregular enough. Alright, once you have that first row in, lay the next one over. And you just continue the process like that ad nauseum. If this seems like the sort of thing that you should be able to make a stamp for, well, I'm one step ahead of you. You can see I made my patch of fur, got my stamp. What I'm actually going to do is try to. Um, squish the clay directly into the stamp rather than stamping onto the clay because it's fairly uh, hard and flat so I won't really be able to get a good texture on because this is kind of like the skin, the pelty part of it and I want to put the, the volume of the fur on top of that so kind of building that up on this stamp here attempting to You know what, I'm going to try something. I have some of this white Sculpey. Let me try doing that because it's so soft. It, it may work for this particular uh, application. seems to work more or less. Makes me think of a wampa arm. It was one of my favorite toys when I was a kid. I used to play with him in the bathtub all the time. Because he had uh, his sh he had ball, ball shoulder sockets but they were um, like held in place with rubber bands or something so they would snap like if you if you pulled the arm back and let go go and, like kill Luke Skywalker right out poor Luke didn't know what was coming no! now because this is the white Sculpey I have to be really careful not to put any pressure on it or it will completely distort and it will be a big thumbprint instead of fur.
I'm trying to uh, kind of muss up the fur here along the spine of the creature where the direction of the fur kind of goes off in several different ways. Basically just jabbing at it. And then I come in with a, some alcohol, tap it down, and then I'll come in and just clean up little bits of it as needed. That'll uh, just about do it for hair and fur. Join me for our, the next and final class, which will be found objects. I've got this little bin full of a variety of goodies that we're gonna stick into the sculpture. So hope you liked it, hope you learned something. Please join me for the next and final lecture coming up soon. Thanks, bye guys.